so we're on now. Many of you have been giving a lot more messages, but consistently, we as a team here on the show have become a lot more worried about the signals we're getting a lot more in, from communities in, in the northern part of Ghana, that tomorrow is supposed to be a holiday. Please, it's not. <laughs> Even though we're not the interior ministry, we still know, based on the communication we tend to get from the ministry and the various organs of government, that tomorrow it is not a holiday. Yeah, perhaps maybe your work can give you some time to go and vote, etc. But after that, please go to work. Unless those arrangements are internal that have been put in place by your work or the people that you tend to relate to it, and they decide to give you some day off. Mm. But please, tomorrow is not a holiday. Never take it as a holiday. When you vote, go home. <laughs> All right. Uh, but uh, parents should also look out because in some of the schools, like where my children go to school, for instance, that's a polling center. So what the, is the authorities have decided is that the children shouldn't come to school Fantastic. tomorrow. Fantastic. So in some of the polling centers where it's also a school for the children, they are not going to school. What it means is you have to get somebody to be at home to take care of them when the schools are not opening. Yeah. All right, so we'll see how that goes. But we have some of your messages. So we want to do what is uh, the needful. So mm -hmm. we'll relay some of those messages to hey, you. Hey, this uh, Bambakia Samedin from Minsi Hassan. Bambakia. Sent this message like how many times? Like 10 times. A very good morning to Mama Vian mm -hmm. Roland. I'm not surprised about the beneficiaries of the Woyomes 51 million Ghana cities. Even from the beginning, we all know what Woyomes didn't, uh, we all know Woyomes didn't spend the money alone. This is an uh, allegation though, uh, Bambakia Samedin from Missy. Uh, this is not, you know, as it is, it hasn't, uh, it's an allegation that's been made. Mr. Woyomes, I think they issued a statement yesterday. Uh, uh, but you know, you say I'm sure you guys to know what. Uh, but that's not to say that I'm confirming the allegations leveled by the NPP. Okay, I like that very much. You know what you're saying, Bambaki Asamed in from the city. Thank you very much uh, for the message you've sent us this morning. This one says we serve a God that can crack a palm kennel with an egg to disgrace a stone. A God who can change a simple smelly shepherd boy to become a king. With him, all things are possible. We rely on him to choose the best presidential candidate, best parliamentary candidate to wipe our tears come tomorrow, 7 December 2016. Um, and, and then you say, have a fruitful Tuesday. Uh, Abdul Salam Tijani, first class from Boko. Good morning. Love you all, fellow Ghanaians. We love you too. I, I, I love your message. It's kind of, you know, uh, but it's all good. Roland, this is your favorite guy sending a message, but before that, Mokap, this Michael one Finance. says, eh? Big Joe. Oh, okay, so this person says, I've checked through all the channels that display the number of days left for elections, but can't see any time displayed today. Uh, just a free consultancy uh, as a cherished viewer. You, we hear you. You go on uh, with some things, but you say, say 23 hours, 15 minutes remaining. This is Koima from Sunyai. We acknowledge receipts of your, of your message. It's laudable. Thank you very much for sending us this message. Uh, your favorite guy, Roland, Dr. Ab Abedi <laughs> Kwada, so a.k.a. Big Joe Shoes. I will just acknowledge the message. And then you say hi to Mr. Prince Ali of Concern. Um, Herkob Mohammed of Edukrum and Iceman of Kwada, so. Salute, sir. Thanks for the no message. No Mokap microphone. <laughs> Mokap is there, but sorry. <laughs> this one says, good morning. Yeah, it's the final countdown. The election is going to be fun and peaceful. Let's enjoy. Delhi from AK City sending the message. Where's AK City, by the way? Is that is that Kaswa City or Charlie? There's something. You mean K City? Or no, this one's AK City. He would, he would tell us. Tell me where AK City is. Uh, this one says... Uh, good morning, Mama V and my man Walker. Today's the due day, and I got an eye red. My gans, my hey, mm? hey, all your ammunitions. But the things that you're mentioning as ammunitions, like I can't repeat them on air. What are you saying? Uh, oh, okay, cool. So he says, my gun, my machete, my explosive, my bullets, and all you can think of. I mean, all my ammunitions, they are ready for action tomorrow, and they are all in my thumb. Let us put all violence on the paper for peace. I am, uh, I am for peace, Roxing, 
uh, at Kume who sent in that message. For a minute, when I started reading, mm -hmm. it got scary, but this is a crafty message. Thanks a lot for your creativity and for sharing that with us. AK City is Akusi. Okay. See? That's Larry. Uh, Larry is in Achimota, but AK City is in Akusi. I, I would love to live in your city. It's a very um, chilled place to be. This one says, uh, you're looking fantastic. 24 hours to elections. Ghana to the side. We have no other place uh, than Ghana. We just hope the right thing will be done because justice before peace we all know the peace that we are enjoying now comes from the uh, opposition parties. Okay, yeah. So you go on and on and on. Uh, Shamsuddin in Ajira uh, sending this message. We appreciate it. All right. So now we have to make sure we give you a recap of um, some of the constituencies that we've been visiting. And uh, I believe we have to go to Cape Coast North very soon. But we also want to give you an insight into what the dynamics are in some of those constituencies. And our colleague Derek Akosam had been doing us the honors of putting together some of the pieces for us. So I hope that you enjoy this one. Um, it is about the Cape Coast North constituency in the central region. A section of the residents in the Cape Coast North constituency are farmers. The others who are not beneficiaries of the soil are traders. From selling phones and accessories to food, the people of Cape Coast North will take advantage of any legal business opportunity to make money. Residents tell me they have adopted this mode of making money because formal employment opportunities are scarce. But not every constituent is into farming or trading. The older folks travel down south to enjoy the benefits of a natural resource, the sea. They fish to make a living. The Cape Coast North constituency is saddled with many challenges. Though the constituency can boast of the University of Cape Coast, Cape Coast Polytechnic, and some senior high schools like Wesley Girls and Efutu Senior High Schools, residents of school-going age are forced to help their parents in the farms and canoes because, according to the parents, they lack the financial wherewithal to cater for the children. The Abra Market, which is the constituency's port of call for all trading activities, from what I see, needs a facelift. These challenges have, however, not prevented the people of Cape Coast North from being actively involved in politics. Residents have since 1992 played a key role in determining who assumes the role of Member of Parliament for the erstwhile Cape Coast constituency. From 1992 to 1996, Harry Hayford from the National Convention Party represented the people of Cape Coast. He was succeeded by Christian Churcher, who served three terms from 1996 to 2008. In 2008, Ebubati Nodro who had been runner-up in the 2000 and 2004 parliamentary elections, was third time lucky and won the seat to represent the people of Cape Coast from 2008 to 2012, when the Electoral Commission decided to divide the constituency into two due to its growing population. My issue is that they will give us a new market and they will also see to the welfare of the business community, how our business will go up and how we have funds to generate our businesses. That is the issue that I used to vote on. Vote based on educational system, infrastructure development, social amenities to the people around, or as, it, as we, the citizens of Ghana, because we voted, we render uh, our votes, we give our franchise to the people, sorry, uh, to our politicians, for them to be in positions and then help us as we expect it to be. Based on the promise that they gave, the corruption that is growing, and so many things as well. Like, okay, like, like the, 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 the corruption as well. When a government comes, I expect the government to do something that will benefit everybody. Like the health insurance, which everybody is able to register. If you are able to register, it means we are going to benefit. Listen to the uh, issues they will say and the promise they will give before I vote. <laughs> promise like, oh, they will bring job, they will employ the youth, and I will vote. I will not go and take money before I vote. Three names have come up for election to represent the people of Cape Coast North in the upcoming elections. The National Democratic Congress has a new candidate following Barton Odro's decision to bow out of the August House after his second term. Former Deputy Interior Minister and current head of the Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communications, Gifford, and that is Kobe Champo, will seek to retain the seat for the NDC. 
but he faces competition from another new face, Barbara Asha AEC, a tutor from the Wesley Girls Senior High School who is representing the new patriotic party. Now, these two newcomers are being contested by Sarah Eresi Bakna from the Progressive People's Party, who is making an appearance for the second time, having lost to Ebu Batin Odo in the last polls. So what will these aspirants do to alleviate the plight of the constituents and develop the Cape Coast North constituency? Let's hear from the NDC's Kobe Champon, then Barbreisi of the NPP and Sarah Bakna of the PPP will follow suit. A lot of the kids just mill about on a daily basis without going to school. Now you talk to their parents, the bottom line is they don't have the financial well without to take them through school. What I want to do is basically to help raise the living standards. Because with a raised living standard, then parents can afford basic things that will enable them to take their kids to school. And therefore, that is the bulk of the problem that I, I see. I agree with you that um, Cape Coast, we always say it's a hub of tourism and we can boast of a lot of wonderful schools. Most of the grade A schools are in Cape Coast, but life is tough. I mean, it's unfortunate that we do not have our children in such schools. And as a teacher in Wesley Girls High School, it's really a burden to know that most of the people that come there are actually not from Cape Coast. They're coming from outside Cape Coast. And I did my own investigation and I realized that poverty is a major problem here in Cape Coast. We, we are all aware that uh, the whole of Ghana, the central region is rated the fourth most poorest region. So for me, I think that what I have to do in my own small way, I have to be able to do something in my own small way to help my people. Um, I've also gone around, I've gone around the schools and I know that the schools are in deplorable state. Now what I've started doing is that I'm trying to encourage the people to go to school. Um, you know, I'm using the parents, you know, attaching myself to the parents so that those who need help, I'm trying for my salary, I'm trying to at least assist them bit by bit. And that is exactly what I'm doing. And those who are also, you know, let's say drop out, who are doing nothing, I'm encouraging them, trying to give them some work to do. The contest looks keen from the surface, but with a lot of dynamics, as some of Marcos opined. 